With the recent acquisition of Tabular for over a billion dollars, it's hard for me not to wonder, will enterprises be able to create a single data layer in Iceberg? This is a question that, I mean, we've asked for a long time, honestly, can we create some sort of enterprise data store for analytics, right? You can call it an enterprise data warehouse uh, or something similar. But the point is for me, one of the questions that I ask and, and one of the benefits of having a single layer of data like we had at Facebook and many other companies also have where you likely just have all of your data being stored kind of like a data mesh and it's standardized, right? Like everyone just uses the exact same data storage system. Is that possible at large enterprises? Now there are other benefits to having your data storage system standardized. It doesn't all have to be in a single layer, but that's the way that I best think about it. Kind of how I view one of the goals of like an ideal state of data. The problem is many companies, large, especially large enterprises, struggle to get to this for many reasons. It includes politics, uh, regulations, right? Like you have GDPR and other things that come into play. You have shadow data teams and you just always have that one engineer that's very, very opinionated and feels like, hey, I'm gonna build everything my own way and not the way the rest of the company is doing it. And perhaps I'm being a little too rigid on the way that I think that iceberg will be used in the future, but with this Snowflake versus Databricks battle, which obviously, let's be clear, it's not just Snowflake versus Databricks. There are so many other solutions you can be using. Honestly, I've had like five customers in the last three months asking me about uh, Data Fabric and, and you know, Microsoft's One Lake. So there are other solutions, but I will say that Databricks and Snowflake have done a great job in terms of marketing and making it feel like there's only two options. But plenty of companies still use Teradata and other solutions. So that's not the only two options. The question for this video that I really want to focus on is can companies build a single data layer that could essentially act again like an enterprise data warehouse of some kind or whatever you want to call it and in terms of like the core layer of their business represented in the key data entities essentially and what stops it. So let's just get this out of the way. Do I think that this final state that uh, is quote unquote in an ideal state, you know, I'm sure it's far from perfect. Is it possible? Uh, the answer is yes, I've seen that happen at companies. It's just really hard. And it's generally not because of technical reasons. Let's start with the very first issue, or at least the biggest issue that often comes into play, which is politics, right? You have all of these VPs. They all want to constantly show that they are the best, meaning they all want to drive the cool new AI or analytics project, right? Like they, they all want that, especially right now, underneath their belt. They want that underneath their control. So they're all going to build their own data warehouse or data lake house or whatever. So you're going to end up with Snowflake here, Databricks there, BigQuery somewhere else. Someone else is using Postgres. It's just going to be a wide uh, smorgasbord of various solutions. And this happens at almost every company, right? Like you almost can't ask a company which data warehouse or which solution they're using because the answer is likely all of them or at least a lot of them. And they're all just creating these silos where they repeat, create the exact same data over and over again. Uh, one of the things that was really great at Facebook was we all agreed, like it's crazy that we got like a thousand data engineers to agree, that this table, like we literally would point to it, is the user table. There isn't another one. We've gotten rid of all the other ones. This is the user table. And there were some similar things around like employee data or, or other key data sets. In some companies that I've worked with consulting wise, they don't even have a single customer table. You might have four different customer tables across different business units, or maybe one company is in Europe and the other you know, part of the company, it's a different entity is in the US. And now you want to answer like how many customers do we have? And you can't because we all have different views on what a customer is. And even in terms of like maybe how they pay and, and, and it just gets very messy very fast. So not only do you have the issue of silos in terms of different data infrastructure. So maybe they all at some point in the future all are on iceberg, right? Like maybe it's all iceberg underneath the hood. The next problem is, and the challenge that you face is like, you need to have a consistent definition of your core business entities, right? Like this is our customer table. We're not going to build another one. So that is another key part. Like as these politics are happening, you don't just need to get rid of the infrastructure problem that maybe different products use different solutions. You need to also work to coordinate everyone to the same end goal, which is to build, you know, one core representation of the business, which is hard because here's the next issue. Like as you're trying to build this core representation of the business, someone somewhere in the company is going to want a report or some sort of data set created immediately that isn't part of the current roadmap for the data team. So what happens? 
they create a shadow data team, right? We've talked about this before. It's basically just, maybe it's a marketing analytics team or a sales analytics team that will go out, buy some solution that's a little more drag and droppy or a little less code heavy. They'll stick it together. They'll pick a big query or maybe some sort of on-prem database that they'll host themselves and start building analytics on top of that. Because it's way faster to ask just, you know, an internal team to do it versus to constantly have to either wait for the data team to do it or wait for, you know, the data mesh to finally finish rolling out or whatever your solution is that you're picking. And so then shadow data teams start appearing everywhere and people start building their own things. This was something that I, I think Airbnb tried to control by limiting like the tool set to force essentially the only people who could build data pipelines to be data engineers. And you had to go through the process of actually having a document that said, hey, this is the table we're building. This is how we're gonna know it passes the quality checks that we have. And the only people that can deploy it are essentially data engineers. Cause they went through the process of having everyone build tables and it got chaotic and they wanted to kind of focus that in. So shadow data teams are another place that as Snowflake is data breaks that are trying to create this one entity, I imagine is the way they view it. It's like just use our our solution, just use our catalog, just use our, you know, version of, of iceberg or tabular are going to fight that have nothing to do with technology and everything to do with the processes in place. I do think it's interesting when I referenced uh, this kind of point on LinkedIn that some of the comments that came up that I thought were really interesting were that some people brought up the fact that maybe Iceberg will just be the transaction layer for applications themselves. And then from there, you can just sit, you know, your Snowflake or your Databricks on top of that and run your queries. Um, there was a few different people who brought up this point and you know if that's one way we can do it one i'll have to see it implemented but two that would be great right because right now we duplicate data everywhere i think that's always a point i make when i talk about the fact that for many reasons we end up taking data from a mysql database and put it to snowflake which just is a duplicate of the same data which causes lots of risk so the idea of of keeping it in its place where it's actually being created or maybe just creating a replica of it so you don't maybe impact transactions is interesting uh, i think Everyone's goal has always been to create this hybrid of transactions and analytics. Currently, I'm sure there's a few products that really sell that idea, but for some reason, uh, we've struggled to really get off of this mentality. Now, another point I wanted to bring up, uh, if you do go down this route of building this single layer of data, another very, very important concept is data security. And I only bring this up because one of the common threads that kind of got created was that someone referenced that they're actually building this. They're building this single layer of data. And someone asked about security. They're like, how are you guys implementing security? And the response was, we don't know. I'm hoping that because this person was a data analyst, maybe they just weren't privy to that specific component. But this is one of those concerning things that if you are building this single layer of data, security, I mean, from whether you're building a single layer or not, needs to be one of the first things you consider. But especially if you're building a single layer of data where everyone can maybe access this data, it becomes even more important that like, hey, we have controls, so we know who's accessing what, we can block people from accessing data that shouldn't be accessed, uh, unless you have certain roles. And honestly, you have to consider things like retention periods and removing data if you don't need it, or if it doesn't, you know, you've got regulations. There's just so many layers of security and privacy and regulations around compliance that are very important that if you approach it this way, you have to consider. And my hope is that, you know, as, Databricks and as Snowflake are trying to consider how to move forward uh, with this current iceberg acquisition, they make it easier for those things to happen, right? A good tool in my mind doesn't expect you to do the right thing. It helps you do the right thing because we won't. We are humans. We tend to be a little bit lazy. And if a tool does not force us to do the right thing, we will get around it. I mean, it's, it's kind of this interesting give and take because if you make it too hard to do the right thing, or sorry, if you make it like very rigid, right? Like you have no choice but to do the right thing. You might either one, skip doing it because you're like, ah, too lazy. Or two, you'll find a workaround and and do it the wrong way or, or do it in a way that's insecure anyways. So you kind of have to find this middle ground that helps people do the right thing and makes them feel like they're not having to do too much work to do it. That is one of the tricks as people are trying to consider how to move forward here in this possible new world. Again. I want to be clear, this isn't the only way to move forward. You can still build on SQL Server uh, and build your whole data warehouse on it. Someone's going to get mad at me because they'll be like, that's not technically uh, a data warehouse because it's not Columnar. There are people running data warehouses just fine on a plain old vanilla SQL Server. And there are people on Teradata and all of these other options that are making it work. And so whether you think it needs to technically fit in a certain box or not isn't the point. My point is that there are tons of other options. This isn't the only way, but if you go down this route, you need to consider that you will deal with the politics. You will deal with shadow data teams still, and you'll have to figure out how to work with that. 
and you definitely need to consider security as you're building these solutions. You can't just build it without thinking, hey, we might accidentally give access to data that shouldn't be accessible. So how do we block that uh, in the long run? So that's my thoughts as I came back from uh, traveling and, and reading more about Snowflake versus Databricks in terms of the acquisition and like where Iceberg could go. If you'd like to learn more, uh, I also have a subsec that I'm constantly publishing at. So feel free to sign up for that. And with that, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.